Spring lock failures are the worst things in FNAF? Hell no, they're not, and I'm about to tell you why, okay? So, let, let's do it. it. That's the intro. And a 10, working at Freddy's. Working at Freddy's would suck. Like, if we're in so much danger, why are we staying for the five nights? Okay, do, do we need a job that bad? Putting, like, the lore reasons aside, right? But the real question is, other than that, how is Fazbear Entertainment even allowed to have employees in an environment like this? Already working there, you would have to deal with the possibility of a spring lock failure. And Henry and William just letting the people who run your business and making them money wear the suits is stupid, okay? Like, put this on or you're fired, but don't end up dying from robotic parts replacing your internal organs in the hot suits that fail with moisture. Like, seriously? Wanna talk about health and safety? What about the having actual corpses stuffed into animatronic suits that are in front of how many kids every single day? Especially when one of them is known for loving pizza and in the VR game is shown in her FNAF 1 form to actually be shoving pizza into to the various joints of her body. Plus, five nights of animatronics trying to kill me? <laughs> yeah, no thanks, okay? I'm glad you fire me at the end of it, but honestly, I'd have quit as soon as, like, the first phone call ended. No, no thanks. Phone guy's like, oh, they might move? No, I'm done. In at nine, scooped. Now, I know you may be mad and think that this is a stupid point, but hear me out, okay? The scooper may seem like a weird, but normal thing, at least by FNAF standards at first, but with the blueprint revealing how this thing actually works, it's an incredible piece of technology that is far worse than a spring lock suit. It can inject whatever it ends up scooping with remnant, which is a molten metal possessed by souls. And assuming that my theory about Michael being a robot was wrong, keeping a person alive after removing their insides. It's capable of doing that, replacing their parts with robot parts, and then having those robotic parts leave the body but still have the person be alive. In essence, it makes that person just a walking case of flesh that is still somehow able to stand up on its own. Unless it didn't actually remove anything, and it just like opened him up, but then again, it would still require some serious juice to keep him alive after that. That's pretty damn impressive, and it's also terrifying. I'd rather have the instant death of a spring lock suit than having my bones replaced with robotic ones. Yeah, no thanks. At least while I'm awake. Replace my bones with metal ones when I'm a, when I'm asleep, so I can just like... And it ain't grabbed. Elizabeth Afton getting grabbed by baby is one of the most terrifying moments in the series. Possibly because Crying Child saw it, which would explain the stomach mouths on the Nightmare animatronics. However, if we were to like see this from Crying Child's perspective, whether that detail is, is canon or not. If we saw it from his perspective, oh my freaking god. That would be so utterly terrifying, I would stand still. I wouldn't know what to do, okay? How do you explain why a kid is like hiding in the bushes while his sister is getting grabbed by an animatronic claw? Okay, you don't. She was just trying to get ice cream. It's horrible. It's shocking. God, especially considering that Elizabeth ends up turning into an absolute psychopath after this, okay? Like, Elizabeth is nuts. But still, like, I don't know. It's all, it's that thought of just watching someone get grabbed. Like, sure, maybe for Elizabeth it wasn't that bad because, you know, she kind of was crazy, apparently. But still, but like, watching it happen, that's just up. That's that's a horrible thing to watch happen. It's worse than a spring lock, definitely. In its seven, WWWAD. Ah, yes. What would William Afton do? Because honestly, being him would suck worse than a spring lock failure. I mean, like, I rip on Elizabeth all the time for wanting to impress her father in FNAF 6 like I was just doing, but I'm right to, okay? This man is an absolute psycho and not even a smart one. I have made so many videos about how dumb William is. Like, what if William Afton was smart? Top 10 William Afton dumbest moments. William Afton's luckiest moments. And that last one was just me ripping on him again because somehow, despite being this stupid and insane, he managed to not get caught. Every single time I talk about how stupid he is, I talk about how he could have done it better, which is why in various videos I will say hi to the jury because I know for a fact that if anything ever happens in this area, they're coming to me first because I know how to be a psycho. But still, 
Come on, that's it. That's the number, okay? Being springlocked would suck, but William Afton sucks harder. Wait, no, 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 that, that sounds like, no, 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 wait, wait, no, don't cut me off. I didn't mean, and it's six doors. You knew that this was going to be on the list, okay? If you've been on this channel at all, you know that I hate the goddamn mother-loving doors in this game. Why do they open when the power is out? That doesn't make sense, okay? If it's an electromagnet, like everyone keeps saying in the comments whenever I bring this up, those require power to turn on. So if anything, it would be costing them power to keep the doors open rather than keep them closed. Gravity does not work in reverse. If the magnet is off when the door is up, it would just fall down. I, I get that it's supposed to be for gameplay purposes, okay, but, but what in-universe thing makes this make sense? People say that it's a, like a safety issue, so like if there's a fire or whatever, you can leave, but that's what windows are for. <laughs> I am almost positive that there should be a window in that room, and if there's not, that's yet another OSHA violation that they need to address, okay? There is no conceivable way in any reality that the doors should work that way but they do they do and it makes me mad like why would you why would you do this okay Scott why sky daddy Scott I'm bringing it back why some people like I said it's say it's a fire safety thing but like no the, if the building runs out of power how could the doors open electromagnets use power to be on so like even if it is a fire thing how are they keeping them up I don't get it <laughs> Also, if you made it through this far, subscribe. You clearly enjoy the video, um, or just me going insane. And there's plenty more of that on this channel, no matter which one you liked, so you're welcome. How about doing number five, being a cop. Being a cop in the FNAF universe must be a horrible idea, because not only are you now a cop, but you're also a cop in the FNAF universe, which for the sake of this list is working at the uh, precinct that failed to capture William Afton, okay? So now the public ridicules you, they don't think you can actually do your job, and you probably got your budget cut so badly that you're maybe able to get one squad car, but that's it. One squad car for the whole station. Plus, now you gotta deal with multiple arson cases and the fact that Freddy's keeps coming back and more kids keep going missing. I don't know, there's a weird purple guy walking around that smells bad, but it's like also like a skin condition so you can't really say anything about it without absolutely destroying the slightest bit of reputation that you have left as an officer in this universe. Like, that's in essence what it's like to be a cop in FNAF. Okay, or what it would realistically be like. Because honestly, these dudes didn't check inside the bleeding, death-smelling animatronics when kids went missing in that building. So, I, I, I get it. They're either ridiculed by the public or you just lose the majority of your IQ once you join up with them. That's, that, those are the only two explanations. It could be both as well. And at 4 MCI, the missing children's incident is definitely worse than a spring lock failure. I mean, the one failure that we know about that happened in the games only affected one person and a horrible person at that. So I mean, just by sheer numbers alone, the missing children's incident is definitely worse, but not even just that, okay? Those parents must have been in a rough spot. Not only did they lose their kids, but they also have to deal with the incompetence of the in-universe police and the whole plot requirement of Afton getting away with it to actually continue the series. So yeah, like I said, there were literally animatronics leaking mucus and blood that people were comparing to human corpses and they weren't actually investigated. So, do you know how insanely infuriating that would be, okay? I'm surprised that Henry was the one to put Afton down and not someone else. Like, yeah, he got springlocked in 93, but that was seven years after the missing children's incident. Had I been one of those parents, I would not have cared about the prison sentence, okay? And I don't think that anyone would have really judged me for it. I think that they would have thanked me and posted my bail. I mean, I would have lost the trial, but still. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. And it's Three, Henry Emily. I get that Springlock failures suck, but even the good guys in this series are kinda trash. FNAF 6 was supposed to be the end of the Afton story. That's what Henry set out to do in that game. Make sure that nobody remembered what happened there despite the parents of the victims remembering and the various other news sources covering it. However, the dumbass figured that the first fire didn't work, so a second one is definitely going to. Uh, and the fact that he was so competent in this plan for whatever reason, that he actually let himself die in the 
process to make sure that nobody remembered what happened um, is dumb. Like I said, dude, even if Henry and William and his kids are dead, the parents of the victims still know. And as we learned in Security Breach, there are other parents who remember too, citing the missing children from the Pizzaplex as happening again, which means they know it happened before. Maybe if Henry had some balls, William wouldn't have been able to possess Vanny and come back yet again to wreak even more havoc, or I don't know, maybe everything would have been fine. Uh, the Pizzaplex missing children are a direct result of Henry being worse than a spring lock failure, and you can't tell me any different. Spring lock failures have only resulted in one canonical death in the series, or death, but Henry has resulted in a lot more. But ultimately, in a number two, being in Afton. Okay, look, spring lock failures are horrible. Okay, yes, and yes, William is a horrible person, but being just an Afton in this universe must be the worst thing ever. It's like the worst spawn point in existence, because every Afton has been subjected to a horrible fate. It's like if Sean Bean is cast to play a character, you know that they're going to die. It's that, but if you're an Afton, you're going to suffer a horrible fate. Okay, let's go through the list, shall we? Here we go. William, springlocked, possessed, forced to suffer for like 60 years at least. Charlotte grabbed by baby, going on to possess the animatronic, then joins a group of other animatronics that crawl inside of her big brother to escape an underground facility, and then gets kicked out of the greater collective, and then goes on to try to impress her father that caused her death in the first place by creating the robot that killed her. Talk about daddy issues. Then we have Crying Child, who we don't even know this kid's name. He watched his sister get crushed, he got crushed by a robot, and then he goes on to possess his brother and makes him suffer before realizing that it's not his fault. Then, speaking of the brother Michael, he blamed himself for killing his brother. He then spent his whole life trying to undo his father's horrible acts, and he himself was scooped in stuff full of robot parts, including his sister, which is, again, a whole other issue. He was made into a purple, bruised man that everyone was scared of, and he was finally burnt to death in FNAF 6 by Henry without even being given the option to survive. So yeah, being an Afton is cursed. And that's not even talking about how Gregory or Vanessa could be Aftons. And finally, in at number one, the lore! Oh, uh, the worst thing about FNAF is the lore. Yeah, having to try to figure it out or even think about it or try to give it any coherent links is probably the most horrific thing that you can try to attempt in regards to the series, yes, but also literally at all. Do not try this, please. I get messages on Instagram saying like, oh, I have a FNAF theory and I was hoping we could talk about it like I, I appreciate that you want to talk to me about it as opposed to like Matt Pat or someone famous maybe because I'm more likely to reply because I'm not famous but like the best advice that I can give to you is if you value any shred of your sanity do not try this do not attempt to put any shred of logic into FNAF it will break you hey okay? do you think that I wanted to do this do you think that I planned on doing this for two years no I read one comment that said I see a FNAF in the thumbnail and I click and it drove me so far into the madness that I'm basically the Joker of the FNAF community. People don't like me because I made a joke video about the worst FNAF fan games that included games that people loved, and now it's on the goddamn YouTuber wiki as a controversy. People get mad at you for misgendering fictional robots. They're robots and not real. People were furious with the Pop Goes creator because of that, and I'm like, what? What, dude? Just don't do it, okay? I'm not gatekeeping. I am. I'm genuinely trying to help you. I want you to be okay, so please save yourself from the toxicity and let my heart and soul be the one to suffer all of this torture, and I will keep doing so. And if you're interested in more about FNAF lore or just me screaming about it, be sure you click the video that's popping up on your screen now. Thanks for watching.